Hey, how's it going? Dave2D here. This laptop here holds the current title of the world's thinnest laptop, and that is a title that gets transferred between different companies, different product lines, because some company will make a really thin laptop, it's the world's thinnest, and then a few months later, some company will shave off a millimeter here, millimeter there, and just it bounces around between the different brands as to who has the world's thinnest at that time. Right now, the Acer Swift 7 has the thinnest title, and it's a nine millimeter thick laptop, actually a little bit less than that. If you put it into perspective, there are smartphones that are thicker than this. Like, it's a very thin device. The build quality is quite good. It's obviously a form factor that is going to inherently be more difficult to keep structural integrity because it's so thin, but they've done a really good job with it. It's milled aluminum and it's made well. Now the target demographic for a product like this isn't huge, right? Not everyone's gonna be buying something super thin just for the sake of buying something thin. You gotta really need or really want something that looks like this. And I mean, there's some compromises. We'll get to those in a little bit, but there's a lot of good stuff going on here as well. So the screen is a 14 inch 1080p touch panel. It's bright with vibrant colors, great for media consumption. It's bigger. So instead of the 13.3 inch screen that we often see in most ultrabooks, it is a touch bigger, but visually it's not a huge difference. The keyboard is also quite good. I expected this keyboard to be not great because it's such a thin device. Uh, traditionally, really thin laptops have kind of mediocre keyboards. This one's pretty good. My one complaint is the layout. There's just a few keys that feel out of place. For example, the delete and backspace key. They're really close together and I was making a lot of mistakes when I first started using this keyboard. Same with the page up and page down keys. They're just right by the arrow keys. It's just a real tight cluster of stuff that you can hit by accident. And it's a very good and comfortable keyboard, but that layout takes a while to get used to. There's also a fingerprint sensor on the side. I usually like fingerprint sensors on Windows devices. I can't even think of one that I haven't liked. This one, for whatever reason, I'm just getting a lot of misreads and errors. Like I wasn't able to log in consistently with my finger, probably one out of every two or three tries at best. So it could be a software thing. I hope it's not a hardware thing, but this particular sensor on this review unit wasn't great. The components on the inside are decent. There's nothing in here that's particularly high powered. It's geared more towards energy efficiency and just low energy consumption. There's also a SIM card in here for constant 4G LTE access. It even has an eSIM option. The battery in here is also good. I'm getting around eight hours of use with the screen at 250 nits and it's charged via USB-C. So the performance on this device is okay. It's actually powered by a KB Lake Y processor. So that's the seventh gen stuff. It's fanless and it'll handle any kind of light computer tasks like browsing, email, media consumption, stuff like that, but don't expect any kind of heavy lifting. Now, there are some compromises when it comes to making thin and light devices like this, particularly something as thin as this. So stuff like ports, there's only two USB-C ports. They don't support Thunderbolt 3 and there's no USB-A ports. In terms of the speakers, they're located on the bottom. They don't sound particularly great. They don't get particularly loud. They're, I mean, they're Ultrabook speakers. When you compare them to something like the MacBook, like 12 inch MacBook, Similar in size, well, similar-ish, they're both really thin, but the 12 inch MacBook speakers just blow these out of the water. And then you have stuff like the webcam, which is located at the bottom of the screen on the bezel. It's something that we see in a lot of thin and light devices, but that's just one of the minor compromises you have to make when it comes to stuff like this. There are some bigger ones though, some bigger compromises, and in my opinion, are almost deal breakers for this particular device. The big one for me is the trackpad. This is a trackpad that does not have any moving parts. So the button mechanic, or rather the click mechanic, is not even a click, it's a tap. So I've been using this device for a little bit over a week and I've been using the trackpad frequently. I can't get used to it. It's something that I feel like if you're used to any kind of tactile response with your trackpad, you will find it very difficult to use this. It's not so much the tactility, like that's annoying that it's not there, but it's the imprecision. So if you wanna do drag and drop, it's very difficult to do it on this trackpad. And I often find that I'm getting missed clicks or just unregistered clicks because of the mechanism. And I think this is a result, or the reason why this trackpad is like this is because this laptop is so thin. I feel like they couldn't put that mechanism of a click or of a cantilever or any kind of like depression device into this super thin form factor. And like to me, that's not worth it. Like if you're gonna do this, if you're gonna build a device like this that costs this kind of money, this like this is one of the pillars of use, right? This is a very, very important part of any kind of laptop experience. And if this is no good, the trackpad, the whole experience feels a little bit shaded. And that leads me to my second thing. Because this thing is so thin, the price premium on this product is huge. This starts at $1,700. That is a lot of money. And when you look at the market and you kind of see what else is out there in this kind of form factor, there are other devices out there like the Razorblade Stealth, the XPS 13, the LG Gram, 
they're very similar in overall experience to something like this. Not as thin, but it's still very, very portable. So you're paying a pretty big premium on this just because of the ultra thin form factor. And it's cool that Acer or other companies out there are kind of just in that pursuit of thinness. It's cool, but when you step back for a second and kind of look at the overall like reason, is this really that useful? Like, is there someone out there that really needs something so thin that they can, you know, what, what's, what's the major benefit of something that is so thin compared to something that's a little bit thicker, like fractionally thicker, but doesn't have the compromises like an extremely high price tag and a trackpad that does not click. Like that's, this feels weird, like really, really weird. Okay. Overall thoughts on this device. I love the fact that Acer is trying something like this. Thin is cool and maybe in the future we'll have the tech to kind of make everything work with clickable trackpads and better performance and all that stuff in ultra thin devices like this. But right now I really feel like that pursuit of thinness needs to chill out for a second because now we're getting to the point of compromised product and I just don't recommend this thing for most people. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.